Hi everyone! I'm Leah. I'm Sky, and we are the Unaffiliated. Welcome back to our channel for our first ever book review. We're reviewing Margaret Rogerson's An Enchantment of Ravens. And also, can we just appreciate the beautiful cover this has? <laughs> um, Charlie Bowater art, I'm pretty sure. So basically, this book follows a 17-year-old portrait artist named Isabel, whose clients are very strange, let's just say. She paints for fairies as they cannot get involved in something called the craft, which is what humans do, such as um, cooking, painting, writing, otherwise it will kill them. Nice. Yeah. So that's why they turn to Isabel for the portrait to be painted. But one day she has a very special client. Is it Sky? Oh. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so this client is a fairy prince, the autumn prince, Rook. And um, she makes a very big mistake when she paints mortal sorrow in his eyes. For fairies cannot feel human emotions. This sets off a chain of events and we get to follow Isabel and Rook on their journey throughout fairy. Let's get into the positives first. Um, personally, I thought it was a very relaxed, easy read. Uh, I never had one of those moments where it's just like, oh, I can't be honest reading this anymore. Um, it, was, it was just very simple. It was very chill and I really enjoyed reading it. I think that it was a really interesting take on the Fae as well because they, the, what Leia said before, they can't do craft and they literally die if they try to do craft. There's a scene in the book where they're cooking over a fire and Rook tries to do it and it nearly kills him. Oh, and I remember. Yeah, I thought, <laughs> I thought that was actually really, really interesting. And I really like the whole they can't feel human emotions. That was a very interesting take as well. Um, overall, the actual concept of the book was just really, really good. And, you know, it's quite nice to see um, a take on the Fae that isn't just, you know, hot centuries old Ooh. sexy fairy man whose only fairy quality is that he has pointed ears or whatever <laughs> so this is like much more original than some of the other fairy type books you see i also like um the way they do their payments so instead of paying money to the humans for their craft they pay with enchantments hence the enchantment of ravens <laughs> and that's a really cool thing because they've got to be careful of what they wish for otherwise it can be used against them and I also, I quite like the main character, Isabel. She's, she's nice. <laughs> she's very like strong-willed and she cares a lot about her family, which is good. However, she is a bit of like a typical YA yeah, character, yeah. yeah. Somewhat of a Mary Sue. Uh, but I like her nonetheless. I like the characters in the book. They're all quite unique. Um, I wouldn't really say they're really well developed, yeah. I guess. Mm. They're a bit 2D. Yeah, um, <clears throat> but there are two characters, March and May, her sisters, who were actually once goats, and <laughs> I just, I really like that idea, and they're really sweet and cute, and it's nice. I also think it was nice to have um, the physical representation of, because the fairies refused to interact with March and May, um, because they were a fairy enchantment gone wrong, pretty much. And um, none of the fairies like seeing them because it reminds them of their own weakness and their own folly. And I think that's a really, really nice bit of symbolism there. I, I, not to get too political, but kind of like how the upper class don't like seeing the working class at work because it reminds them of, you know, what they've done and what they've inflicted on it. They don't like to think that they have brought this about. And I think that was a very, very nice, subtle statement for the book. Negatives, moving on, do you want to start? It kind of reminded me of when you're doing a creative writing test and you're getting really into the story and then suddenly they're like, all right, you've got five minutes left. And then you're like, oh, shoot. And you have to just rush the ending and get it all done. That was a huge vibe I got from this book because the ending was really, really rushed. It didn't make sense. It didn't really have time to explain itself. You know, this huge thing happened in just, was it like two paragraphs? Yeah, a very, very big plot point happened literally in two paragraphs and the build up to it was longer than the actual event. Yeah, you find that in a lot of books. And when I finished it, I was kind of a bit confused, like what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like she should have kind of developed that more and made it a bit longer. I really agree. It was. Kind of like almost as though she had a 300 page limit and she started writing and she really enjoyed it. And then she looked down at her page count and realized, oh no, I have 50 pages left to put the plot in. So then she just shoved it all in one go. And yeah, it didn't really seem that intentional to me. I don't know how to describe it. It just seemed a bit 
off. Personally, I didn't really like Isabel. I loved her at the start. I thought, hey, this is a really interesting character. Um, I'm really interested to see where she's going to go. But then Rook shows up and she just goes all moony-eyed and, you know, suddenly she's blinded. She's like, oh, I'm in love with the Fae. Oh, I'm going to die because of the good law. Oh, yeah, they have a law. Sorry, we probably should have mentioned yeah. that before. They have a law in Fairy that Fae and humans cannot fall in love. So obviously you know where the book is going. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not but really yeah, she thinks she's in love with him, and then one day he comes and he's uh, enraged, and he comes and takes her away from her home because she painted his weakness. All fairies have a weakness that shows through their glamours, and his was his eyes, um, which were purple, and you can see mortal sorrow in them. And when she painted that, and he unveiled it in front of his court, it showed him to be weak. So he got angry, and he wanted to take her away. But this whole time, he's like dead set on punishing her and you know, uh, humiliating her and all this kind of stuff. And she's just like, oh, he's so cute. <laughs> yeah, and, like, it, he's so adorable and all this kind of stuff. And I did like Rook's kind of very fairy nature, you know. He was kind of like a cat almost. I think he had big cat vibes. Even though um, he was kind of a raven. Yeah, yeah. he's meant to be a raven, but I thought he had cat vibes. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> there you go. But then it really kind of, I don't know, she started falling in love with him because of that. And I don't know if... A guy started acting like a cat in front of me, I wouldn't really <laughs> uh, go for that, but you know, each to their own. I would also say I was a little bit disappointed because there aren't really any plot twists. Well, I mean, no, not every book has to have a big shock horror plot twist, but there just wasn't really much plot in the first place. It was place. too predictable yeah, as well. Everything that happened, you could just kind of see what was going to happen. And there was no like, whoa, I did not see that coming moment, mm. you know, none of that. And I also don't like the representation, mm. which we'll go into now. You had this thing of Rook being centuries old mm. um, and immortal, and then you have this 17-year-old girl. It just, it makes me feel uncomfortable because he's like so old and she's literally 17. And I just, I didn't like that. Building on that, it's literally paedophilia. <laughs> it is. Like, I mean, you look at that, he's been alive for centuries, and yes, she's almost an adult by our standards, but you think of all of the life experiences and the maturity that he would have had in that time, and she is barely 17, and she's lived a really sheltered life. All that she's ever been able to do is paint portrait of these creatures who she so fears, one of which is, you know, he is one of those creatures, so that's another really dodgy thing, you know, because, like, this whole time throughout the thing she's like reminded that he could kill her at any moment or whatever like, that's um, not a healthy relationship <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that was brilliant i mean it's a lot better than other ya relationships with this trope that i've seen but that's not to say that it's okay so yeah i think that was really dodgy i would also like to touch upon the fact that there was no lgbt rep whatsoever now this could be explained away with the fact that the fae can't feel emotions but they can, which we see with Rook because he falls in love, he experiences sadness, he's, he has human humour. Um, <laughs> I mean, if Rook can feel it, then why can't other Fae? I just think it was a bit weak in it's quite that contradictory. Whole thing. Yeah, well. very, very contradictory because you have some characters who are like, um, there's a character called Lark who's a young fairy and she is desperate for Isabel's approval and she's really very happy go lucky. And then when she comes to apologising for something that she did, she's not being serious. Um, Isabel says something like she was just mocking the tears that she'd seen Isabel cry. And I don't know, I feel like that was very contradictory because considering she was feeling human joy, but suddenly she can't feel human sadness because she's a fairy. That doesn't make any sense. There was also um, barely any rep for people of colour. Now, <laughs> this is a bit complicated. We discussed this. Um, Rook might be a man of colour, but we don't know. Yeah, it wasn't very well explained. Yeah. Yeah, like, I feel like she touched on it a bit, but she didn't touch on it enough because I was thinking he was white, and then suddenly it was like, oh, compared to the spring court with his brown skin and curly locks, and I was yeah. like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't make any sense. It came out of nowhere. Because, and also, even if he is a man of colour, I would say, A, that rep is too ambiguous to really be applauded, and B... Most of the plot takes place in Whimsy and the Spring Court, both of which are dominantly white areas. Yeah, there's no um, one else who's person of colour. Yeah, so basically all of them, except maybe Rook, were white. And I mean, for me, I just think nowadays you just can't really make an excuse for that. Didn't she want to save Golden as well? 
Uh, yeah, yeah. That's not a I think he called. Called. you described him as golden, which I've only ever seen before with um, Sarah J. Mass. <laughs> and uh, God knows, we've got some issues there. But yeah, that's kind of a wrap on our general review. But now, if you don't mind spoilers, we'll probably go into a bit more detail. For example, the ending was rushed. The Older King, so again, spoilers, so you know, if you don't want spoilers, stop watching now. Um, but the Older King was killed in two paragraphs, I think. And he was meant to be this big, scary, almost final boss, as it were. Literally, all she had to do to kill him was show him a portrait of himself and then stab him with an iron dagger. And... I mean, if it was that easy to kill him, considering most of the other Fae seemed to dislike him and want him dead, why didn't they do that before? Even if they exactly. couldn't show him a portrait, they could have just, you know, stabbed him, considering how powerful they're supposedly, uh, well, they're meant to be or whatever. Yeah, the older king generally just didn't make any sense, and the ending where Isabel became queen didn't make any it sense didn't either. It didn't explain it. Because, yeah, it, like, because the older king had been of the summer court, all of whimsy had been summery, but then when Isabel became queen, it became autumn -y, even though Rook is the one with the autumn powers, not Isabel. It didn't really make much sense. The whole her becoming queen and stuff after killing the Elder King, I mean, that was only explained in the prologue. And it doesn't say, like, whether she's now immortal or is she now fairy, even though she doesn't want to be fairy. She means epilogue. <laughs> Ep like a prologue. Yeah. Epilogue! Epilogue! Oh, no. <laughs> I guess another like spoilery thing that I did like about it was the whole glamorous thing and how Rook, even though sometimes his glamour like came off, she still wasn't like put off by him and didn't use that as a reason to hate him or just leave him and stuff. So that was really good because in lots of fairy books you have them as like hot, perfect fairies, like there's no flaw. But in this one there was flaws and that wasn't like a terrible bad thing. Mm, it was, I think there's a line in it as well that was like, and he wasn't horrifying, just simply strange, and I could come to terms with his strangeness or something along those lines. And that was a very nice take on it as well, because like you say, a lot of the time fairies are just meant to be, in YA, they're just these like perfect hot specimens, there's nothing wrong with them. Whereas this was like, he's a monster, but he's a, not to quote Neo, but he's a beautiful monster. <laughs> I think that that was a really nice thing to do, I agree with that. I would say I'd give it three stars. Um. Um, I originally gave it four stars, but now like after full and reviewing it, I definitely changed it to three or 3.5 stars because there are a lot of faults with it. But also there is some stuff that's actually quite original and I haven't seen before and I, I enjoyed it. And throughout the book, I wasn't thinking like, oh, I hate this, it's mm. disgraceful burn it yeah and like i said it was actually it was an enjoyable read even though there were issues with it if you want just something easy to read that you don't have to put much thought into i could not recommend this book more but if you're looking for something with a bit more substance i don't think this is the book for you yeah because it's just a standalone okay thank you for watching um leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more i guess yeah yeah um check bye. out our blog oh yeah check out our blog <laughs> Oh, my burp tastes like cinnamon. <laughs> We're putting that in the video. No. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the book out of the frame. Right, okay. Mm. That's right, bitch. <laughs> you just got book snatched. <laughs> book snatched. Val is known for paint. <laughs> Brooke, who is a autumn print. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there just a piece of... No, move for forward, forward. There. <laughs> what is happening here? Such a nightmare. Shut up and do the fucking thing. Okay, okay. <laughs> I go on English and Leia. Okay, right. <laughs> okay. God, you're such a mistake. Okay, where am I?